Really? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson and I'm sitting in a stretch VW Vanagon camper made from two Vanagons and converted to biodiesel fuel by its owner, Otmar Ebenhoek, who's the owner of Cafe Electric. Otmar, this is such fun. Yes, it's a, it's a fun vehicle. It's, it's a great camper and a, and a great party vehicle. I'll bet it is. <laughs> well, I have a story to tell on Otmar. Otmar is not only the maker of this van and electric vehicles, Otmar has been playing with um, vehicles, tinkering with vehicles, converting vehicles, since he was that high. And I know that because I live next door to Otmar when he's nine years old. What did you start with? Let's talk just a little bit about your history and how did you get into electric cars? Well, Back when I was 12 years old, all this toying with bicycles and the like ended up with a, uh, a wooden electric go-kart okay. that I would zip around the, the town. And uh, at that time, I always thought I would work with alternative energy of some sort, wind energy, solar or at something. 12, at 12, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. You knew it early on. Yeah. And then when I was 15, I discovered cars and a license, and, and I forgot all about it for about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Then I found myself uh, in Colorado repairing old Volkswagens, and I thought, you know, I'm just not helping the environment any here, mm. keeping these old, dirty Volkswagens mm. running. Yeah. And after a little soul searching, I found electric cars and started doing conversions for people. And then uh, from that, conversions led to my seeing the shortcomings of the products we had available to convert the gas cars to electric. Ah. And so from there, I started to design electronics that could be used for the conversions. So that's what you're doing now with Cafe Electric. That's what Electric, I'm doing now. Is, yeah. is, is to help people convert. So let's take a minute and look at where have electric vehicles been and mm -hmm. then where are we now? Because where right. we want to head is how can the rest of us have electric vehicles and does it make sense and on what scale? So let's, right. let's give, right. us, give us a point back. Well, way back, 1900s, we had more electric cars than gas cars. So, really? yeah, they originally, they were, they came before the gas cars. Then, um, Were they on battery? They were running batteries, yes. I didn't realize And that. Uh, at that time, it was not uncommon to have a 50-mile range and 25-mile-an-hour speed, and they would run around with all the other gas cars and the court carriages wow. and so on. Wow. And um, then, I guess it was uh, Charles Kettering invented the electric starter. And suddenly the gasoline car became more convenient for people. Mm. And there were a lot of political pressures. I'm sure. I mean, the oil companies right. and a right. lot. They had this so waste had... product that they called gasoline that was left over from making heating oil. They didn't have anything to do with it. It was all poisonous. So they found that they could sell it for gasoline cars. So we, we had a large switch over. Um, in the 70s, there was a resurgence of people converting their gasoline cars to electric because of the oil crisis and right. all that. And uh, all very grassroots. And, um, and then probably the big movement started in the 90s when uh, GM made the Impact prototype, which later turned into the EV1, um, a very high-performance electric car, fast accelerating, 80-mile range on lead-acid batteries, and then over 150-mile range when they went to nickel-metal hydride batteries. And um, people loved them. And so we had hope. I mean, we had we had the vehicle we wanted. I mean, right. the start of it. Right. And the people, GM only leased them. They never sold them. Okay. And then, this is the subject of a whole other movie that's just coming out. <laughs> they, some, somehow the car was killed. And um, 
they've retracted all the cars, pulled them all back off their leases, and crushed them. Now, there's a small number still out there, but they're in museums and so on. Um, so that's a whole other subject, but basically there were both political and economic forces that mm -hmm. made it difficult. And it's always hard to bring a, um, you know, a, a disruptive technology. Sure. In, You're going to, you yeah. know, you've got the stream of gasoline and diesel vehicles. It's like right. a real discontinuity. This is people, real different. Yeah. yeah. So nowadays you can get conversions. You can sometimes find a used conversion that someone else has converted from gas to electric. Uh, you can build your own. But there's really no highway-capable electric cars available on the market at this time. So the conversions mean, this is for a hobbyist or somebody that's, right. that's just going to want to dig in there and get their hands greasy, taking out yeah. the old car and putting in batteries and other equipment right. to make it work. It, it's a very small portion of the people. Which is fun. <laughs> we'll get to see one that you've done I mean, sure. in, in mm -hmm. a bit. But other than the hobbyist level, basically, it's not a... There's not much available on the market right now. Um, Toyota actually, they made some RAV4 EVs that they sold. So they sold for about $42,000 and then you got a $10,000 rebate. And um, the last one I saw sell on eBay used for, for, with 40,000 miles on it went for about $62,000. Oh God, because there's so, there's, there's so few There's so them. high demand and people who believe in electric cars really want them, and a lot of people don't want to build their own. Well, you, I, count me in. Yes, I, you yes. know, I don't have the means, <laughs> time, energy, right. skills to do that. And, I, and right. I'm most people. Mm -hmm. I'm most people. Right. But I would love to have that, that kind of car. Yeah. How much range, how many batteries did the RAV4 electric? The RAV4 was running a nickel metal hydride battery okay. pack, and it would do a little over 100 miles range, normal driving on the highway. So, or around that's town, fabulous. either way. Yeah, it's I you mean, know five seater, yeah, and you'd you just plug it in in a few hours. It's full, um, very user friendly, low maintenance, and we don't know how long the batteries will last on a RAV4. Um, I've heard of cases of them going well over a hundred thousand miles. Uh, wow. So, wow. you know, and that that is an issue with and electric cars. And why did cars. they not continue doing this? I mean, well, that is subject of a long okay. story but okay. basically California had a mandate for 10 percent of the vehicles sold to be electric okay. and uh, the auto manufacturers gathered up and made a made a strong case they tried to make a strong case that nobody wanted them that it was impractical and so on because this technology really did threaten their you know standard sure, operating the hegemony, procedures. Their, their you know power they're making team. the only way that GM was staying alive was selling SUVs because mm -hmm. of the tremendous profit margins on them. Right. You come out with a new technology like this, it's hard to make a lot of money in the in the early years. And so it's it's difficult okay. and so okay. they found it difficult and didn't want to do it. And so Toyota teamed up with GM to kill the mandate that and as soon as the legal mandate in California was rescinded then all the manufacturers who were making electric cars stopped. There was Toyota, Ford, and GM all had a model out. Wow. So yeah. where, do, when that was a couple of years that ago? That was, yeah, a few years ago, well, five, six years ago. So and, where are we um, now? I mean, well, where, I mean, we're in a little bit of a lull here where the only thing that is really available, even though at this time when we need really alternatives, are the conversions other people have done, which mm -hmm. then require someone pretty skilled to keep you know, maintain them. Right. They don't require a lot of maintenance, but if something does go wrong, it's not something a normal mechanic. You have to mechanic. understand it. And right. Sure. Right. Sure. And, um, and there are a number of manufacturers who are working on new models. Now, it's hard to tell. They often don't like to talk. But there's, I know of a sports car that's coming out. It's a high dollar item, very high performance, 300 mile range, extremely fast fun car that, you know, it'll be in six figures to, to And it's going to say way past but, the budget of the right, person who's going right. to say, I'm ready to but replace my car. But it is a car. start. And it is a start. It is a, um, it's a first entry of a lithium battery car into the market. Oh, lithium. And now mm. this is where mm. the big change with electric cars is going to happen in the next five to ten years. And that is the current crop of lithium batteries, which are increasing their capacity by eight or ten percent a year. So they're okay. still climbing quickly. The current crop, it's pretty easy to get, 250, 300 miles of range per charge on an on a, on a electric a, a, conversion car. Mm -hmm. Whoa! So now expensive batteries, I would expect. They now. are relatively expensive, and at this time, 
but they're coming down in price. They don't, they're not like a silver zinc battery, which is inherently expensive. The lithium has the potential to be practical. There's a few problems with, with high temperature and long life that, we're, that they're working on resolving now. And progress is being made due to camcorders and computers mm -hmm. and all that, which yeah. pushed the technology through that infant stage very rapidly. And so now we're starting to see that this is going to be coming to electric cars pretty quickly. I think you'll see it on, uh, in hybrid vehicles. Mm -hmm. Hybrid vehicles are using nickel metal hydride now. Lithium could help them a lot. Plus, they could allow to get a plug-in hybrid vehicle. And this would which is, be... Which is... It's a beautiful thing. The ideal, right. I would think. Now you can plug in your hybrid vehicle to a, a 110 outlet, let it park overnight. In the day, maybe you'll do 50, maybe you'll do 100 miles range, all nice. depending on the design. And never have to start the gas engine. But then for those who are always worried about, well, what if I want to drive to Los Angeles? They'll have the gas engine there to take them. To do that. And I think for a public acceptance situation, that will help um, bring the pure battery electric cars in. Because once you've got a plug-in hybrid, take one look at it and say, well, I only drive 50, 60 miles a day. Right. Why do I need all the complexity? I could have a nice, simple battery electric car. And I think at that point, they'll come back. I hope so. <laughs> I hope you're a clear-eyed prophet on this for us. Because, <laughs> we'll see. We'll because see. I think that, that for a lot of people, 90% of your driving is going to be close by, yes. short errands, your commute, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I can imagine people having or sharing an electric vehicle and maybe just sharing with other people a gasoline vehicle right. for the long tours. Right. Um, you know, the long trips. Right. Far away. Yeah. The, um, the electric cars work really well on local trips. One of the things many people don't realize is that a gas car pollutes tremendously for the first five minutes. And that you completely avoid with the electric car. Is it, it's getting warm, right? Yeah. The, electric, so the gas car is warming up. The catalytic converter doesn't work at first. Um, you're running extra rich to make the engine mm -hmm. run better. Mm -hmm. And all and those things pollute, pollute tremendously. And then when you... Uh, you go to an electric car, well, your pollution's the same no matter what. It all depends on the source you're feeding it on. Now this source. is Yeah, now this is another great about thing about electric minutes. cars. Okay. Is that you can run them off solar. If you have panels on your house, you can charge them okay. off the solar. Okay. You can plug them into the grid and maybe you opt for green energy like I do. You buy the wind energy. Uh -huh. um, and so as electric cars get old, they pollute less rather than more because the power plants get cleaner and you have cleaner options. Because we're cleaning up the, the, our the, act on, the other, the on that level, the supply, right, right. The supply level. Whereas so get, with other vehicles, that we're more you're, you're more always more polluting more older. as they get old and so on. So the electric is versatile that way. That's a nice way to think about it. I hadn't really thought about how we supply the electricity that, that feeds the vehicle. It's important to look at the whole system. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes, I like that. Um, yeah. That's the big picture. So. In our last couple of minutes, what, what can we hope for and how soon? Got any hopes that you know? You know, there's this thing about batteries and electric cars that a friend of mine always says, it's Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football. They announce <laughs> it. They say, in two years, we're going to have these batteries. And then, poof, you land on your back and it's not there. These lithium batteries, they were in a, I heard, read about them in 1981, oh, that dear. in three years we would have them. Oh, dear. But well. with all that cynicism, I think that in the next two years, we'll have several choices of expensive, small company built electric cars. Okay. And not I the expect big, not, not, not Toyota the big, yet bringing back right. a RAV4 equivalent or not anything. yet. Don't. But I expect that, say, by 2010, uh, one of the manufacturers, two of the manufacturers will have a smaller, more economical, affordable electric car for us to use. And in the meantime, for those that are really dedicated, they can convert or hire someone to convert their gas car to electric. And it is an early adopter thing, but at least it's one way to, to run around with that method and try it out. Well, let's, let's take a look at yours, and, and mm -hmm. I'll start by asking that question, how much does it cost? Yeah. I mean, how much, if you right. were to buy one somebody's already converted, how much did it cost right. you to convert yours? It varies a lot. Um, if you do all your own work and your bare minimum, you're around four or $5,000 plus the car. Okay. A more typical quote, I would say, is seven to $12,000 in parts. 
And that much again in labor if you have to pay someone to do it. So you're talking what, These fourteen are, to twenty-five thousand dollars yes, plus your vehicle. Plus your vehicle. These are custom, you know, they're like a yeah. hot rod. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of labor goes in, each one is different. There are some kits, you know, you can do a, a ten thousand dollar kit, maybe another two thousand dollars in batteries, and then a weekend's worth of work from a good mechanic, and you can convert an older rabbit or an older Porsche 914 like my car using a kit. Um, but your selection is real limited on the car and a lot of people want something newer and mm. there's mm. not a lot available mm. for that. Yeah, my car, it's a bit of a race car. I've got $18,000 in parts in it wow. to duplicate. And not it, counting so. your li not, labor, not which, counting is, which, my is, time. Right. which is going to... Which is that much again, probably, you know, if you figure it that way. Well, let's go. I want to go see your car. Let's let's see okay. what you do with your conversion. Hey. Great. Let's okay. have a look. Oh, watch your head there. Oh, this is where you keep your car? Yep. This is the Cafe Electric Shop. Okay. And here. We have the Porsche. What a cutie. Scylla power. What is what's that? Scylla is the motor controller that I built. Okay. And this is the car I use to test new designs. So, what's under the hood? Well, not as much as you'd normally see in a car because the motor's in the middle. It's empty. I'm well, basically. Right. We've got some batteries. We've got a charger to charge up all the batteries. Okay. And here we have a charge port to plug it in. Well, let's, let's see. Okay. Here's the plug. Okay. It's all nice and safe. Waterproof. Plug it in. I uh, hear a whirring sound. Right. That's the charger fans turning on and it's charging up the pack. Great. How long, how long does it take? A uh, little under an hour in this car. Is that all? Yeah. It's not a very big pack and uh, they charge pretty quick. Wow, that's interesting. Well, let's see what's in the back. Okay. Oh, I love it. Porsche grill. In the middle here. More batteries. Yep, okay. more batteries. What's this? What's Those this? are the motors. There's two of them stacked up there, and they connect to the standard transmission from the original car. And here? What's under here? Well, under here. We have the motor controller that I built. That? This, this little guy? That's the one. The Zilla. What does it do? Well, it regulates power from the batteries to the motor. And it's kind of like uh, a really big dimmer switch. A dimmer switch? Yeah. I mean, how does that work? Well, it takes the DC voltage from the batteries and it pulses it. And when you push on the accelerator pedal, it gives you longer, larger pulses. And it gives you a nice, smooth acceleration ah. Ah, okay. that you wouldn't have if you just turned it on. Reminds me, how far can you go on one charge? Well, on a normal conversion that a typical person might build, you can figure about 50 miles per charge. Uh, this one's about half that because it's set up for racing. A race car, huh? Okay, so how fast does it go? Zero to 60 in a little under five seconds. Okay, let's see. Let's have a look. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. such fun. Thank you. I cannot wait for the day when I have my own electric vehicle and I can follow you down the road and not be the only one. There'll be a lot of people who are going to be walking that. Yeah, it's coming. Great. Thanks for joining. Well, thank you for having me. This is Jenea Donaldson and this is Peak Moment, Community Responses to a Changing Energy Future. Join us next time.